Hello, this is Steve Rizzetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are in version 2021 of Premiere Elements, looking at some of the new features. Now, one major new feature in Premiere Elements that may not be immediately obvious is a major change under the hood. The way the timeline digests and plays media clips. Now, let me show you something. If you go up to Preferences, which on a PC are under the Edit menu, go to General. Going to see if there's a new option added here. It says use GPU accelerated effects, transitions, and workflows. It's detected my GPU and it's going to use it now to play the timeline. So things that used to bog down the timeline are no longer going to bog down the timeline. Now to me, this is pretty amazing just how deep this runs. So I'm going to add a clip to the timeline. This is a plain old AVCHD clip. The program automatically sets up the project to match the clip's specs, indicated by the fact that there's no orange render line here along the top of the timeline. That's good. This is a standard clip here from an AVCHD camcorder, but I also have a clip here from my phone. I'm going to drag it down. Look at this, even though it's a different kind of clip here, it uses a different frame rate, uses a different video format, I'm still not seeing that orange render line above it. The program is able to play both these types of clips, both these formats, without needing the timeline rendered. Here's another clip. This is an MOV file off my action cam. Once again, works perfectly. Look at this. You don't need to render your timeline, even when mixing media of different resolutions, of different formats, of different codecs. In fact, look at this. This is a still photo. Drag it to the timeline. Once again, no orange render line above it. So the program is able to do a lot more on the fly using your GPU. And I don't have a very powerful graphics card, but apparently it's enough for the program to be able to use it to do this type of timeline processing. In my book, I give you a complete list of the effects that will no longer need to be rendered on your timeline, but here's a brief list here, okay? Motion effects, that's scale, rotation, position, picture and picture effects. When you create pan and zooms, you don't need to render your timeline anymore. The program will be able to play those or render those on the fly. Changes in opacity, including fade ins and fade outs. Let's add a fade in and fade out here. Once again, no render line above there. Effects like the track mat, the garbage mat, tint, sharpen, image control, horizontal flip, Gaussian blur, edge feather, drop shadow and even transitions like the additive dissolve, cross dissolve, dip to black, dip to white, and film dissolve. That's pretty amazing to me. Even dissolves or even transitions added to the timeline do not need to be rendered on the timeline. The program can use your graphics card to render them on the fly. It's pretty cool. Like I say, it's under the hood. It may not be immediately obvious, but ultimately it's a big step forward for how the program handles different media formats in the same project. Now, if you want to know more about this feature and what that actually means, <laughs> and if you want to know more about all the features included in Premiere Elements 2021, be sure to check out my moviepix.com guide. It is available at amazon.com, the moviepix.com guide to Adobe Premiere Elements, as well as the moviepix.com guide to Adobe Photoshop Elements. I'm Steve Grisetti. Thanks for joining me. See you again real soon.